In this video, we'll be taking a look at three-phase full wave control rectifier with R load. So let's get started. So this is a circuit diagram of a three-phase full wave control rectifier with R load. So previously we had seen a single phase full wave control rectifier with R load, isn't it? So there we had only four SCRs and two legs. Whereas in this case, we are just adding one more leg with two SCRs in addition. So now how do this circuit operate? So in order to understand this, we'll just break down the circuit into small pieces and try to understand with respect to waveform as how it operates in the most simplest way as far as possible. So let's consider the source voltage waveforms. We'll be considering three phase sinusoidal voltage sources. So phase A, phase B, phase C, all are phase displaced with respect to each other by 120 degree apart. So phase A is starting at zero. Phase B is starting at 120 degree. That is phase A is leading B with respect to 120 degree. And phase B is leading phase C with respect to 120, meaning to say that phase C is starting at 240 degrees. So now, in order to understand the operation, we need to understand what is the line voltage waveform. So why is that required? I'll tell you as we go further. This is the phase voltage waveform. So now what is the line voltage waveform that we are going to get? In order to understand that, let us consider only one cycle of operation. That is what happens when thyristor 6 and 1 is conducting. When 6 and 1 is conducting. One important observation here is during the entire operation of this, what happens is one SCR in upper leg will conduct and one SCR in lower leg will conduct. So that's how we will trigger the SCRs. Meaning to say that at a time, if in this case T1 and T6 is conducting, meaning to say the upper leg T1 and lower leg T6 is conducting, at least one SCR in the upper leg and one SCR in the lower leg will always be conducting. A very, very important observation. And we will be triggering it in this way that is 6, 1, 1 and 2 together, and then 2 and 3 together, and then the cycle repeats. So it's like 6, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 1. Again, the cycle repeats. So at a time, two thyristors will be triggered, and once 6, 1 is completed, we will be triggering 1, 2, 1 will still be conducting and we will be triggering 2, meaning to say that 6 will be not triggered and 2 will be triggered. So it's like if you carefully observe, there are totally 6 cycles, that is 6, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6 and each, inter we call this as one particular interval, so each interval 2 SCRs will be conducting and if you carefully observe, for 360 degree, there will be 6 intervals and each interval will be for 60 degrees and if you carefully observe for 360 degrees, since there are six intervals, there are one SCR conducting for at least 120 degrees. Meaning to say, if you see six one and one two, one is still conducting from this interval to this interval. So each SCR will be conducting for a period of 120 degrees. So this is the fundamentals. We will take a look as we go deeper into this, but on a high level, we are going to trigger six and one. So what happens? That is anode of phase A is connected to positive and cathode is connected to negative. Similarly, cathode of phase B is connected to negative and anode is connected to positive. Meaning to say, why is it this particular fashion? If you see anode, that is the supply voltage is positive with respect to phase A and with respect to phase B, the supply voltage is going in the negative direction, isn't it? So as a result, we will be saying T1 is forward biased and T6 is also forward biased and consequently these two will be acting as short circuit and current will be starting to flow through this path, through this path, through this path, through this path and this path. So mainly you might be having a doubt as why we are triggering one is here in the upper leg and one is here in the lower leg. The reason is to have a circulating path for the current to return. That's why we are doing the triggering in this particular fashion. So now what is the output voltage? The output voltage V out is nothing but VAB, isn't it? So whatever you're supplying here will be directly appearing at this point because these two are just short circuits, isn't it? There is no any other component available. It's just acting as a short circuit under forward bias condition. So whatever is supplied will be appearing across the low terminals over here. So V out is equal to VAB. Now we know that V out is equal to VAB. Let us consider certain equations to understand what is VAB now. So VA, we know that it's Vm sin omega t. VB, we saw that v, VB is displaced 
by 120 degrees. So we know that all phases are 120 degree apart. So Vm sin omega t minus 120 degree and Vc is nothing but Vm sin omega t minus 240 degrees. So now how do we find out V out? V out is nothing but Vab. So now what is Vab? Vab is nothing but Va minus Vb. So we know Va and Vb substituting and solving this you will be getting V out as e Vab is equal to that is V out is equal to Vab is equal to root 3 times Vm sin omega t plus 30 degrees. So we know Vab. Now let's try to draw the waveform for that. So root 3 Vm sin omega t plus 30 degree as in if you see the phase displacement with respect to the fundamental quantity that is phase A compare Vab with respect to Va we see that Vab is leading Va by 30 degrees isn't it? So it will be starting 30 degree before that of phase A. So if you carefully observe this is minus 30 point so it's starting from this rather than 0. So it's leading by 30 degrees isn't it? So that's how we will be drawing the phase AB line voltage waveform. Only thing that I have not considered here is this voltage will magnitude of this will be slightly higher because you are multiplying it with root 3 compared to that of phase A so that you can consider while drawing the waveform but on a high level the voltage waveform that is VAB will be phase displaced by 30 degree with respect to VA. I hope this point is clear. Now similarly VBC and VCA will be phase displaced by 30 degree. If you again do the same sort of analysis you will be getting VBC VCA waveform to be phase displaced by 30 degree with respect to phase B and phase C that is instead of starting at 120 degree it will be starting at 90 degree for VBC and again for VCA what will happen instead of starting at 240 degree it will be starting at 210 degree over here so you will be starting at 210 degree and you can extrapolate the previous values. So this is nothing but the line voltages AB, BC and CA. I hope this point is clear. So once you know how to draw the line voltage waveforms, it's very very simple to analyze the output voltage waveform. Now let's take a look into the detailed analysis. So as I mentioned the conduction sequence is as follows and each conduction sequence is associated with a specific phase. So this is very very important to remember because it's helpful for drawing the waveforms. So we saw 6 1 was conducting the associated phase was AB. 1 2 when it conducts it's AC. 2 3 when it conducts it's BC. 3 4 it's BA. 4 5 is CA and 5 6 is CB. So we'll be triggering in this particular fashion and in the next cycle again 6 and 1 will be triggered and the sequence repeats. So now again we will be considering the phase voltage waveform. We will be drawing the line voltage waveforms. And we are going to see what happens when alpha is equal to 0, alpha is equal to 60 and alpha is equal to 90 degrees. So now previously we saw AB, BC, CA are the line voltages but we did not draw AC, BA and CB isn't it? So it's nothing but the same way just like the way we analyzed for 6 and 1. For AC what will happen 1 and 2 will be conducting again V out will be equal to VAC that's the only difference and you have to subtract VA minus VC you will be getting this particular quantity. So in general if you are getting confused on how to draw this waveform just start at minus 30 degree for AB and then displace each of them if you carefully observe displace each of them with respect to each other that is with 60 degrees. So if you do that you will be able to draw this waveform easily. So the operation is nothing but when 6 and 1 is conducting we are getting V out as VAB when 1 and 2 is conducting we will be getting V out as VAC similarly as 2 and 3 is conducting V out is VBC so when we subtract VB minus VC you will be getting the magnitude and the phase difference and based on the phase difference you can plot the waveform. So once you arrive at this it's very very straightforward to understand the output voltage waveforms. So what happens when alpha is equal to 0? What happens when alpha is equal to 60? What happens when alpha is equal to 90? When alpha is equal to 0. So when alpha is equal to 0, one important thing that we have to remember is we had seen this in the single phase 
half wave control rectifier single phase full wave control rectifier circuits as well isn't it so the minimum angle for triggering the scr will be 30 degrees as in when i say alpha is equal to 0 it it starts only from 30 degrees because after 30 before 30 degree if you are trying to trigger it what happens the other phases will be more positive compared to that of the phase that we are trying to control so in case you have not understood this explanation please go back to the previous videos and try to understand as it is fairly very simple as it is explained over there so what happens over here so when alpha is equal to 0 meaning to say the minimum angle it will start is at 30 degrees so alpha is equal to 0 is this point so at this point what happens we saw that v out is equal to vab for 6 and 1 conduction isn't it in the previous operation so 6 and 1 conduction in the sense it will just follow vab waveform that is v out is equal to vab so till this point v out will be equal to vab so this is based on thyristors 6 and 1 conducting again in the next cycle what happens we are going to trigger thyristor 1 and 2 so every 60 degree we are going to change the conduction sequence every 60 degree this will be changing it will be 6 1 1 2 like that so after 60 degrees so it started at 30 meaning to say alpha is equal to 0 and after 90 degrees that is 30 plus 60 is 90 degrees so at 90 degrees we are changing the conduction sequence now 1 and 2 will be conducting just because 1 and 2 is conducting the output voltage is basically v out is equal to vac if you again draw the circuit for that so output will be vac vac is nothing but this particular waveform from this point to this point again in the next cycle what will happen we will be triggering 2 and 3 and based on that vbc will be conducting again in the next cycle we will be triggering 3 and 4 based on that we will be getting vba again the cycle repeats you will be getting vca vcb and you can extrapolate a little in the front of the waveform so always try drawing the waveform from this point so that you won't get confused as how it starts initially so now let's take a look at what happens when alpha is equal to 60 degree so when alpha is equal to 60 degree meaning to say 30 plus 60 is nothing but 90 so 90 is the point where our waveform analysis should start meaning to say v out will be equal to vab from 90 degrees so it will start at this point and it will just follow vab waveform so it's from this point till this point it will be equal to the vab v out is equal to vab so till this point it will be equal to vab so why up to this point because 60 degrees is the duration at which we are triggering 6 and 1 after 60 degrees gets completed only we are going to trigger the next cycle so after this point what we will be doing we will be triggering 1 and 2 as a result it will v out will be equal to vac so what is vac at this point it will just if you extrapolate here vac is the green waveform it will just give you a waveform like this again another block like this again 1 and 2 will 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 not trigger 1 and we'll be triggering 2 and 3 so basically we'll be getting v out as vbc so it will follow the yellow waveform similarly you will be getting it for the other phases as well so this is when alpha is equal to 60 degree now what happens when alpha is equal to 90 degree when we say alpha is equal to 90 degree that's nothing but 30 plus 90 degree that is 120 degree 120 degree is the point where we have to start our analysis so from this point so what is that we are going to get v out is equal to vab if we know that so whatever is the red waveform vab you will just be getting that over here so you're going to get it here till this point now one important observation here is this is only for an interval of 30 degree and now it becomes equal to zero as in it will go to zero because vab phase itself is going in the negative direction it's basically going to reverse bias our thyristors as a result the SCRs will not conduct and the output voltage will become equal to zero because they are open circuited so at this point you will not be getting any waveform again you will be getting VAC waveform at this point because after a interval of 60 degree you are triggering thyristor 1 and 2 so the most important point here is even when you are triggering thyristor 6 and 1 after this point it will not conduct it will be equal to zero because if you carefully observe the waveform of AB 
the supply voltage that the line voltage itself is going in the negative direction when this source is going in the negative direction meaning to say it's naturally commutating the SCR and it's not conducting so similarly the same thing happens for phase AC and so on BCB AC ACB so you, we have drawn this in this particular fashion so you can extrapolate the same waveform in the initial stages as well so the major observation here is when alpha is equal to 0, the output voltage is continuous. When alpha is equal to 60, just at that point, the output voltage is going almost it's touching 0 and then it's coming back. Meaning to say, when alpha is greater than or equal to 60 degree, what will happen? The output voltage will be discontinuous. Meaning to say that the output voltage will go to 0. So when the voltage is going to 0, we say that as discontinuous mode of operation. And you might be having a question as what is the current waveform? The current waveform will exactly be the voltage waveforms. Only thing is the magnitude of it will change based on the resistor value we are choosing. That is nothing but we know that I out is equal to V out by R. Isn't it? So if value of R is equal to 1, then I out will be equal to V out. So exact waveform will be followed. If the value of R is equal to 10, then I out will be lesser than that of V out. Isn't it? So Based on that, you can just change the magnitude and draw if asked for current. So the continuity and discontinuous mode we are talking with respect to the voltage as well as the current. So current is also going to zero because it exactly follows the voltage waveform apart from the magnitude. I hope this video gave you a clear understanding on how to un analyze a three phase full wave control rectifier with R load. In case you have any question, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. If you like this video, please do like it, share it and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thanks a lot.